Is the BBC dip still used in loudspeakers? Jim asks that great question in Northern California, and he writes, Good day, Paul. I have a long-going love of Harbeth speakers, and they are good. And the English sound, Harbeth, is a British company. Could you discuss, explain, and give your opinion on the BBC dip? Well, okay, so let's first talk about what the BBC dip is. Years ago, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, wanted, I mean, these guys have everything nailed down to, to a science, and they figured that years ago when they wanted to start getting into recording, when they wanted to start getting into all this production stuff, they needed an approved BBC speaker, the BBC monitor. And so they hired some pretty famous guys. They built these, these monitors that were very flat, that were studio quality, and they hooked them up, and this was years and years ago before they really had good frequency response measuring equipment and, and the kind of stuff that we have today. And they noticed that while it, to the best of their knowledge, through the crossover regions and through the entire spectrum of this small monitor, that it sounded a little harsh, that in the vo vocal areas, in the, in the upper mid-range areas, there was a harshness to the sound that the only way they could get it out was to reduce lower than flat an area around two, three, four kilohertz. Right about, interestingly enough, where the tweeter and the woofer, this was a two-way system if memory serves correct, where the tweeter and the woofer's crossover met, okay? And they had, again, designed this to be very flat. But to the ear, it turned out not to be so flat. So they lowered it down unnaturally, and it sounded right. So that became known as the BBC dip. And I think most manufacturers of speakers, certainly our mentor, Arnie Nudell, we used to call it the Nudell dip because he would take it even lower. He would, he would run it because his speakers were designed differently. Um, he would take it from about 800 hertz up to about 3 kilohertz or so. And a number of manufacturers still have this bit of a dip at those frequencies to make it sound more natural. So what's going on? Well, there are a few things. In the BBC monitor, the point that the lower part of the tweeter and the upper part of the woofer met, the, the crossovers are causing the drivers to rotate, the, the, where the phase to rotate as it rolls off. And it does some fairly funny things and combines to make actually a louder sound at those frequencies. Um, and, you, and you get different um, uh, dispersion happening at the crossover point. In fact, you know, one of the things that, that has been painfully aware to speaker designers since as long as speakers have been designed, the crossover point, that the point where the woofer is, is done going any higher and now you need to get out of it, and the point where the tweeter is not going to go any lower in frequency and you need to roll it off, is the worst part of a speaker. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, and of course, it depends on how it's all designed. But it, if, for instance, if the woofer continues up too high, it's going to get into trouble. There's going to be a point where it, the, 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 you can get cone breakup. You can, uh, it, it just starts, there's, there's peaks and resin. It's just kind of nasty up there. And you don't want to take a woofer too high. So you take it as high as you can go, and then you roll it off. And you're trying to get out of there. Well, that, that transition area is not where the woofer is working at its best, and likewise at the tweeter. If you take a tweeter down too low, it'll sound pretty, pretty wonky. And so you, you gotta get out of the tweeter as quick as you can, so it stays within its sweet spot. So the tweeter works up here in, in, in a nice area, and the woofer works here in the, its nice area. But that point where the two are meeting is one of the most difficult parts of speaker design to get right and, and few people do. And there's, I got to tell you, that, that people argue about this all the time. You want to get out of it quick, you, you have these set, set of problems. You want to get out of it too slow, there's another set of problems. 
and crossover design is an art. And the art is trying to figure out how to get it to sound right and measure right at the same time. And that and, and, and make sure that the off-axis and on-axis responses are kind of smooth and even. It's a real challenge. But yes, in answer to your question, many loudspeakers today have something similar to the BBC DIP, which was in pretty much invented by people that I admire. Why? Because these BBC engineers were definitely of the, the type that, that we kind of wink at a little bit because they listen more with their, their, their meters than they do with their ears. And these guys broke those rules, listened with their ears, found that if they wanted it to sound right, they'd have to do something that kind of went against the grain. But they did it anyway because it sounded right. Later on, we figured out why. That happens a lot. And bless those people. Good for them. But that's what that's all about. Hey, great question, and thank you for asking. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.